streaming on Facebook. Okay, now thank you. So, welcome everybody to this morning's lecture. The lecture is the Sega of Green to Blue Revolution in India, the World Food Prize 2021. And we welcome the speaker, Dr. Ravneet Kaur, who has very kindly uh, consented to be with us today and to speak on this, which is her specialization. And we are especially indebted to Professor A.S. Aluwalia, our previously our colleague and now a pro VC at Eternal University. Welcome, Professor Aluwalia, especially you are you. joining from the US. So we are really thankful to you. Um, without you. much ado, I will now hand over to Professor Arun Grover to talk on the uh, to talk on the genesis of this lecture series. Professor Grover. So good morning all on the occasion of the expository lecture on World Food Prize 2021 awarded to Dr. Shakuntala Tharak Singh Hilstead of World Fish Institute in Malaysia, which is run by Consortium of International Agricultural Research Centers, known by the acronym CGIAR. Dr. Shakuntala was selected for the World Food Prize 2021 for her innovative contributions in nutrition sensitive approaches to aquaculture and food systems. SPICI has invited a young fisheries expert from the Department of Zoology of Punjab University, namely Dr. Ravneet Kaur Upalji, to deliver today's talk. The SPSTI used to host expository lectures on Nobel Prizes in Physics, Chemistry and Medicine in the pre-pandemic era. However, as the pandemic struck the world and the online lectures became a new norm for knowledge dissemination, the society assumed responsibility to host expository lectures on all the Nobel Prizes and it added to its list the lectures on Nobel Prize in Literature, Peace and Economics. At the suggestion of the former President of Chandigarh Chapter of Nasi and the Vice President SPSTI, we revered Professor IBS Pasi. The list was further expanded to include expository lectures on Nobel Prize in Mathematics and Turing Award in Computer Sciences in the year 2020. The Chandigarh chapters of INSA and INYAS also became co sponsors to the SPSTI series on the Nobel Prizes and then the Global Excellence Awards in 2021. In the year 2020 itself, we had included an expository lecture on the World Food Prize. The 2020 World Food Prize was awarded to soil scientist Dr. Ratan Lal of Ohio State University. And the SPSTI lecture on the World Food Prize 2020 was delivered by Professor S.S. Chahal, the former Vice Chancellor of Rajasthan Agricultural University, who had known Dr. Ratan Lal personally. The first food prize winner is announced in the month of May. However, we missed organizing it in the year 2021. The World Food Prize 22 has already been announced in May of this year, and it stands awarded to a NASA scientist, Dr. M.S. Cynthia Rosenbeck, for her work on relationship between climate and the food systems. The Deputy Director General of IARI New Delhi, namely Professor Tia Sharma, who was with us as our Executive Director Nabi, has consented to deliver the ex an expository lecture on the World Food Prize for the year 2022. This lecture would get delivered before the commencement of the Nobel Prizes 2022 in the month of October. The SPST lectures on the Turing Prize 2022 and the Abel Prize 2022, which were announced in March 22, are also pending. We propose to schedule these lectures soon after the conclusion of the SPSTI series on institution building and nurture initiatives in independent India. 
The last lecture in this series is scheduled on August 13, 2022. And as announced, it would be delivered by the newly elected president of INSA, namely Professor Ashutosh Sharma, who was our earlier secretary for Department of Science and Technology. So the series is going well. The series is being recorded for all those who cannot join the lectures online. It's for us also to access the archives to have an experience of listening to this wonderful lecture once again at our region. So with this, I conclude and hand over the mic back to KRG. Yeah, please. Yeah, it's over to you. Uh, please, please unmute, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Grover. And now I request Professor K.K. Bhaseen, our very own chemistry department stalwart, Professor Bhaseen, to introduce Professor Alubalia, another stalwart, and our guest of honor today. Professor Bhaseen, please. Yeah, thank you, Professor K.K. Uh, good morning and warm greeting to you all. I'm thankful to all the people, Professor Grover, Mr. and Mrs. Dharamveer, Professor Rajinder Singh Ji, Professor Kant, Professor Khanna, Dr. Abdeep Kaur, Dr. Chawla, and all attendees. I take this distinct and rare opportunity in introducing a highly accomplished and profoundly decorated botanist and environmental scientist of the country, Professor Amrit Singh Alwal. Professor Alwalia is presently Pro Vice Chancellor at Eternal University, Badusa. Professor Alwalia basically needs no formal introduction. He is hardly, there is hardly any committee of Punjab University. He was not a member. <laughs> Professor Alwalia was born in 1955 and obtained his PhD from Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. He has served Punjabi universities in different capacities as a dedicated teacher, chairman botany department, fellow of Punjab University Senate as a senator, dean science faculty, as the most popular warden, a successful dean student um, welfare, uh, dean students welfare, pres uh, present uh, president Punjab uh, Punjab Academy of Sciences, director youth welfare. President Puta, secretary to the vice chancellor. So that is that is the thing I mentioned that he is highly any committee. He is not a member. He has a teaching experience of forty years and forty three years of this as a research. He has published more than one hundred and sixty research papers in journals of repute, and delivered nearly same number of national and international lectures. He has supervised a large number of MSc and MPhil students, numbering 30, and guided 25 PhD students along with Kothari Fellows. He has attended more than 80 conferences, workshops, and inspired camps, and organized several national and international symposia. He's a, he's a member of a large number of academic and professional bodies like UGC, CSIR, and recipient of numerous awards and achievements. The list is very long. So I just uh, would like to make a mention that he is a decorated scientist. So, and may I now request with this brief introduction, Professor Aluwalia, uh, telling that we are all looking forward to your address as a guest of honor. Professor Aluwalia, please. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Paseen, uh, for the introduction which uh, seems exaggerated rather uh, well good morning to you all uh, let me first thank the organizers for uh, of this series uh, of important lectures to provide me this privilege to be guest of honor today i am particularly grateful to professor arun kumar grover professor uh, mrs and professor uh, kia dharmvirji and dr dharmvirji dr paseen saab Dr. Ramneet, Dr. Kant, and uh, Dr. Shavala, and uh, members of organization team, guests, ladies and gentlemen. I think it gives me pleasure and uh, some satisfaction too to note that India has a fair share in the World Food Prize Laureates 
ever since it was founded by Dr. Borlaug, the father of Green Revolution, a Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel laureate himself, uh, with the thought process to overcome hunger from the globe, and hence known as the person who perhaps saved uh, uh, more lives than any other person uh, who has ever lived on this earth. So his philosophy was that uh, if we can confront hunger and poverty, then the people from all walks of life can be get together and uh, they can have uh, a better living all through. The World Food Prize and annual uh, dollar to, to 50, 100,000 award that Dr. Borlaug uh, conceived and hoped would highlight and inspire breakthrough achievements in improving the quality and quantity as also availability of food in the world and which is now often referred to as the Nobel Prize for Food and Agriculture was, uh, you know, ultimately the sport came from general foods with the aim of enhancing food supply. So it has, uh, I mean, if we look at the Indian scenario or global scenario, there have been 52 different laureates so far, which have been announced, as Dr. Grover said, the, even the latest, including 2022, uh, no, uh, this food price laureate from 1987. And out of these uh, 52, uh, eight India-born scientists are there. And even this uh, uh, Shkuntalaji also happened to be from Indian origin, which is in addition to those eight, if we take Dr. Ratalalji as well. So they have got the honor in different uh, fields. Someone got it in wheat breeding, someone got in rice breeding, someone is maize breeding. And as far as blue rev revolution is concerned for this, this award, this year's award is there. Uh, earlier also in 2005, a similar uh, kind of work in Indian scenario and global scenario was done uh, and uh, another person from India got the food price also for our blue revolution. Of course, the green revolution has been well known and the first and uh, uh, the foremost recipient, Dr. M.S. Swaminathan, who was uh, basically involved with the green revolution uh, along with Dr. Borlaug. I think uh, there the scene started and he happened to be the first uh, recipient of this award. And he was followed by White Revolution, uh, which was Dr. Kurian. And he was the third in, if we look at, uh, uh, you know, the award list. And later, there were a good number of people who came uh, from India to receive the award. And during the first 18 years of award, India has a better frequency. They got nearly five awards, rather than the later 18 years of uh, uh, this award, where we have only three coming out, out of uh, the total number of awards coming. So this year in, in 2021, as uh, has been said earlier, Dr. Shkuntala Harik Singh uh, Thilstead got the award. She was, uh, she's a native of Trinidad and Tobago and a citizen of Denmark and uh, descendants of, of Indian Hindu migrants brought to Trinidad uh, to engage in agriculture labor long back. So she became the 51st recipient of World Food Prize for our groundbreaking research, critical insight and landmark innovation in developing holistic nutrition sensitive approaches to aquaculture and food systems from the farm to food processing to final consumers. So by bringing together all kinds of interdisciplinary and inter international collaborations. She could drove transformations in aquatic food systems to deliver improved nutrition, uh, better ecosystems, and secure livelihoods for millions of people across the globe. Uh, she also felt that uh, this award, aside from personal joy and gratitude as a scientist, this is an important recognition of the essential but often overlooked role of fish and aquatic food system in agriculture research for development. Fish and aquatic foods offer life-saving, life 
changing opportunities for millions of women, children, and men to be healthy and well nourished. Now the fish are nurtured in water and their feed is consisting of small phytoplankton, which happen to be the major primary producer in the food chain. Some of these planktons, which are known now and consumed directly also as nutraceutical with a rich nutrition profile, are also ingested by relatively larger fishes and hence are rich in and hence fish, fishes are richer in protein and many other components. May it be vitamin B12, minerals, polyunsaturated fatty acids, etc. We in India are uh, finishing our aquatic sources by either filling them or polluting these to a limit that these organisms may not be able to survive. I would wish that our water bodies uh, should be kept alive to such cultures of fish and other aqua cultural life uh, so that the poor people not only get their nutritious food, but some income too for their survival as also earning foreign exchange for the country. Uh, earlier, as I mentioned in 2005, Dr. M. Uh, v. Gupta also got uh, this food prize for Blue Revolution, and he did work. Uh, he, he was a like prime architect of this revolution in Asia and around the globe. And uh, if we look at uh, uh, the speaker, Dr. Ravneet Kaur, she has been working in fishery science, though her specialization work is focused on a different aspect of fishery science rather than production directly. I'm sure that after having gone through the life and work of Dr. Skuntala, she must have her plans to include such challenge to her future project work to help the malnourished and undernourished population and helping increasing the production of fish. It looks at total, if we look at total production of fish in India, the data of 2017-18 indicates that it is 12.5 million tons which nearly 33% comes from marine and the major part is coming from inland fisheries. So uh, if, we, if we look at uh, overall data, even 1.38 metric ton fish or its product were exported far over 45,000 crores by India and that figure must be higher now. Government of India has released a data only yesterday on July 1st, 20. 22, that India ranks first in inland capture of fish since 1980s, because we are contributing around 6% of total fish production in the world second, uh, and, and are second only to China, which is contributing around 7%. So fish production continues, contributes around 1% to India's GDP, and uh, whereas it's 5% contribution to agriculture share, to GDP. So raising of one kg of fish requires perhaps lesser water than raising one kg of rice or getting one kg of metal uh, refined or one kg of petrol getting refined. So another concern can be the food habit of Indians. North uh, India normally uh, goes after green revolution and are the, the number of non-vegetarians are lesser compared to the South, which has already got uh, into the blue revolution because of a large, uh, uh, you know, geographical coastal line. So this geographical diversity also in India, I think it's useful for marine and inland fisheries. And uh, that's why its per capita uh, uh, production is increasing and per, per capita consumption is also increasing. So area of inland fisheries uh, to be increased and the production to be done on scientific innovative uh, methods. Water bodies of the villages, towns be protected from filling. These also are to be protected from excessive sewage or pollution by different affluents. India has a long cost coastal line and we can do wonders in this area if we can really uh, raise these fisheries and uh, other aquacultural practices on the way these awards have been given and the kind of work innovatively they have done. If we can also take up, our scientists can take up this work. I think our aquatic bodies can also be becoming uh, quite uh, earning bodies for India and getting 
uh, uh, the, the foreign currency as well. At the end, I am sure Dr. Ravneet Kaur will deal with all these aspects comprehensively. I congratulate her in advance. Once again, I am thankful to the organizer, especially Professor Grover, Professor Paseen, Dr. Uh, Kia Darmidji and Dr. Darmidji and all others uh, with regards and thanks. Thank you very much for providing me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Professor so, Aluwalia. That was a wealth of knowledge. And I'm sure you will, uh, you will indulge us with another appearance on SPSTI someday. Thank you. And no. now I request Nishma, Dr. Nishma Wangu from INIAS to introduce today's speaker, Professor Abneet Kaur. Nishima, please go ahead. Thank you, ma'am. A uh, very good afternoon to one and all, Professor Grover, Professor Kia Dharamveer, Professor Basin, Professor Aluwalia, Mr. Dharamveer, and, all the, and uh, Dr. Ramit Kaur, and everybody present in the panel. I'm very pleased to give a brief introduction about Dr. Ramit Kaur. Uh, she is currently working as an assistant professor at Department of Zoology, Punjab University, since 2014. She did her BSc, MSc, and uh, PhD from Punjab University and BSc with a gold medal. She was the coordinator of the Department of Zoology Alumni Association for 2018 to 21. She was also the president of the Punjab University Zoological Society 2020 to 21 and secretary of BITS, uh, which is Biotech Development Society, DST 2006 to 7. Her areas of interest, as Professor Alu Alia has also elaborately mentioned her uh, main areas of interest, they include fish scale, biomaterial, zebra fish neuroscience, fish otolith as biomonitoring tool, I hope ma'am I'm pronouncing it correctly, and wetland ecology and biodiversity. So she has wide areas of interest, particularly in the blue side, the blue revolution side. She has one book to her credit, and 17 research articles in peer-reviewed international journals. And she has also got three book chapters to her credit. She has delivered invited talks at various platforms, many eminent uh, platforms where she has delivered very important and very uh, interesting talks, in fact, and has scored three major research grants from Department of Science and Technology and University Grants Commission. She has bagged a number of prizes in various conferences and is also a life member of INSCA, Department of Zoology Alumni Association, and Punjab University Zoological Association. There's a whole list of prizes which she has won, and but I will not uh, take up the names of each and everyone because then I will come in between you and her lecture, which is on the saga of green to blue revolution in India. World Food Prize 2021. I may now please take the opportunity of inviting Dr. Ravneet Kaur to please kindly deliver her lecture. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Nishima. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let me share my slide first. Is it visible? Yes. Okay, uh, so a very good morning to all of you and it is a great pleasure and honor to have an opportunity to speak on this prestigious platform. I am thankful to Professor Aduwalia for being the guest of honor and sir, thank you for uh, joining us late. <laughs> I, I could make out it's, I, it is two o'clock at uh, USA and thank you so much sir and i'm thankful to all the organizers kia ma'am dharambi sir the scene sir uh, and special thanks to professor arun grover uh, our uh, former vice, uh, vice chancellor and he was the you know inspiration and had a vision behind this lecture and he inspired me to give this lecture and thank you sir i have learned a lot while you know reading so much about uh, this uh, world food prize and my i will be starting the today's presentation which is going to be related to the saga of blue uh, green to blue revolution in india and uh, uh, the during my presentation i'm going to cover the world food prize 2021 along with you know and as uh, you also know that this world food prize is also known as the nobel prize for food and agriculture which has been uh, sorry i don't know why it is moving 
uh, so this world food prize uh, which was so just hold down i think so i know slides are moving let me see what's the problem hmm. don't put on the full screen okay so it's fine now and yeah. uh, uh, so the, the the during my presentation i'm going to you know speak upon the world food prize 2021 and uh, it is also known as the nobel prize for food and agriculture and this nobel prize for 2021 was given to dr shukuntala thilstead for her revolutionary research on sustainable poly pond polyculture farming uh, he, he, she basically worked on the small fish farms along with the uh, along with the you know large carps so in here in her research uh, this uh, this particular world food prize you know it weighs back from 1986 when when professor norman Borlaug he was the visionary behind the world food prize and with his vision he said he would like to in, uh, to give uh, to, uh, to just so he uh, he inspired uh, the breakthrough achievements in improving the quality, quantity, and availability of food in the world. He was a he was a Nobel laureate, Nobel a Peace Prize laureate, and he arranged the sponsorship for the and uh, for the price of the World Food Prize that is two lakh fifty thousand. And it is a very interesting story that there is a John Ruhan, same from Iowa State, who you know who sponsored ten billion. Billion, billion US dollars as a seed prize for this world food prize. Both of them, you know, uh, this uh, uh, Professor Norman Borlock and Rohan family, they all, you know, they, they all belong to the, uh, they both belong to the state of Ohua. That is, uh, uh, that is the, this is an area that is the Ohua state capital where the laureates are honored and officially awarded this prize. This, the, lab, the library in Desmonds was converted into the food prize hall of the, for the laureates. So, the first recipient of this World Food Prize was in 1987, and it was none other than our very own Professor M.S. Swaminathan for his revolutionary work in the field of disease-resistant, high-quality crop varieties. And with his work, he could help small farmers to feed the world. He is also known as, he is also known as the father of green revolution in india and uh, 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 basically uh, this is an honor for all of us that the first recipient of this award is our, our very own indian born and indian worked on indian fields uh, professor swaminathan there are several indians who made to this hot spot and one of the important one ones are dr Vigis. Kurain. He is known as the milkman of India, and he was responsible for the white revolution. And uh, if we all know very well about Amul, that is Anand Milk Utpak Limited, which was basically a cooperative, dairy cooperative, which was started by uh, Dr. Oh. Dr. Vegis. And, uh, you know, if we see uh, the prize within two years, we were getting the second world food prize also. Then the other food prizes like was were given to uh, Dr. Gurdev Singh, Gur Gurdev Singh Kush from um, uh, for his global supply of rice in 1996. Then we have B.R. Bariwala from for you know this this man is known as the father of Indian seeds industry for for developing Maharashtra High Seed Company in 1998, and Dr. Surinder Vassal for forming the Miracle Maze that is 2000 to, uh, to, in 2000. 
the one of the very uh, one of the known stalwarts of uh, fishery scientist dr modu dugu vijay gupta uh, was responsible for the white red about the blue revolution in uh, southeast asia and is also known as the father of neeli kranti in india he got the nobel prize for uh, nobel prize, world food prize, he got the world food prize 2005 for his work on explosive increase in aquaculture production he was advocating polyculture technique of raising multiple species of fish in one pond so this is what you know he tried to do he was understanding the basic tires of an aquatic ecosystem and what type of fish is going to eat what type of food so by this he was utilizing all the niches of the aquatic pond system for example if we see tilapia we have big carp and we have the silver carp. Now, these three carps, they are the surface feeders. They would like to feed on the surface. Whereas common carp and mirigal, they are the uh, they are the fishes which would like to feed at the bottom of the aquatic ecosystem. Whereas grass carp and tilapia, they are the they are the, they are the uh, fishes which would like to feed on the margin of the aquatic uh, ecosystem. Whereas rohu, if we see is going to feed upon the bottom as well as is a marginal feeder and moreover if we try to understand the behavior the type of food they eat so for example the big carp would like to eat zooplanktons very small zooplanktons but fish uh, silver carp is uh, fond of uh, micro phytoplanktons so depending upon different uh, you know feeding habits also the dr vijay uh, uh, dr vijay gupta he tried to explore each and every part each and every niche of an aquatic ecosystem so for this and he also um, he was also respo uh, uh, he also worked in a world uh, um, a world fish institute and developed a genetically improved farmed tilapia farmed tilapia which is known as the gift which is known as the gift and this is this is the fish which is known as the nile tilapia oricramus niloticus and it is very you know cultured uh, it is cultured in most of the southeast asia and it is known as the second uh, uh, second la uh, second most culturable fish in the world so this fish is a very popular fish and with the development of the gift what uh, dr vijay had done he had you know increased the number of production this particular fish could produce 23 times so it was giving lot to the farmers and that is why it is considered to be the second most cultured fish and is being loved by most of the farmers as the production is more and the flesh is even tasty and has a good market value also just wait i don't know why my slides are not moving so he promoted he promoted the inland aquaculture aquaculture that is for he developed mini factories mini factories means he even explored he explored the small abandoned ponds he roadside ditches seasonal flooded fields lakes and abandoned ponds all were used by the uh, by the fish farmers to develop this polyculture technique and to develop the different types of the fishes so in we all are very familiar with uh, with pukri in manipur where each house has its own pukri and this is a small pond in which the fishes are developed in which the uh, the uh, basically it is a water harvesting system also and people use it for the recreational pur purposes also so by you know that the development of this polyculture these all water bodies were, were being used by the farmers to uh, to produce the fish so this led to the empowerment of the local communities and the farmers uh, poor farmers and the rural families
he also taught the poor and the landless people that how we can recycle farm waste such as by using rice bran, weeds and manure to support the large fish stock. So this is also a this by adding, you know, rice bran, weeds and manure, we were adding uh, to the lower to the bottom of the pond to the detritus part. <coughs> we were providing development of the zooplanktons and the phytoplanktons, which was basically the food of the fishes. And subsequently, if we see, there was a peak. Uh, there was a peak of development in 2000. We could see that the the increase increase in the inland production. So, if we see that the increase has been to 10.4 million metric metric tons of fish are being produced in the in 2029 to 2000, and this peak started when uh, started with the development of the polyculture in India. So as um, at Fish and Fisheries Lab in PU also, we are also working, uh, uh, you know, when, when this uh, production increases, there are so many issues such as uh, uh, such as uh, 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 issues of research arises like fish consumption, fish nutrition, fish feed, sustainable development, fish waste disposal, fish toxicity, and fish taxonomy. So everything is related with the production of the fish. If the production is more, definitely there, there is a development, there is a production of the fish, fish waste, and then comes the, its disposal part. So in case of the uh, in case in our lab also, we are basically trying to utilize the fish waste, which is being, uh, uh, which is normally we take it from the exotic fish carp, like silver carp, grass carp, and cyprinus carpio, and we try to uh, extract the credential molecules that is hydroxyapatite and collagen so this hydroxyapatite is basically used by the uh, in in uh, in orthopedics in uh, you know uh, in, uh, in so, uh, 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 dental infill uh, um, for fillings the dental implants and these molecules even are, can be used as an biosorbent so the other part of the fish scale is that is of collagen and by developing collagen we could make a scaffolds which can be further used for the for the development of the uh, for uh, this uh, tissue tissue engineering cell culturing and even this scaffolds can be used to um, to upload some bacterial peptides so that which can which has further uh, um, application in controlling the bacterial growth we also you know when it uh, the, this polyculture started the fishermen started to th uh, they thought that you know by cleaning the pond with the pesticide would kill the small fishes and would help the larger fishes to grow so what they did is they started cleaning their pond with the pesticide and they started growing only the culturable fishes which they wanted but as these culturable fishes were put into the pond and moreover during the monsoon season the, from the rice field, the pesticide, where the lot of pesticide is being used, that pesticide uh, water enters into the water uh, into the fish pond. It plays havoc with the phys fish physiology. We start we studied on the fish eye, and we tried to understand what were the changes in the fish eye because fish eye is in coming in direct contact with the polluted water. Otherwise, normally the body is being covered by scales, which is a very protective part, and it is a very interesting fact that even though the water bodies showed presence of heavy metals, but in the muscles of the fish there was no heavy metal. So this is a you know if we see the fish has a uh, has a, the, these scales are quite protecting them, but the eye which is coming in direct contact with the with the pesticide showed the development of the cataract and re, it, even the retinal degeneration was seen in case of the fishes <coughs> when you know the um, the organophosphate or the monoprotophos which is a very commonly used pesticide in North India. And the heavy metal part, you know, if we are able to understand the fish uh, hard parts, we can also understand the water bodies 
life history for example if the um, if the water if the hard parts are going to deposit the heavy metals and by studying the age of the fish we can understand if it is 10 years old we can understand yes uh, the what was the quality of that water since last 10 years so this is how we use the fish as a bio, bio monitoring tool so everything is at the interface of you know agriculture fish farming and fish industry and everything is related to its production so if we see the work of the world food price uh, laureate 2021 Dr. Shukuntala Hart Singh Thistlet, and she worked on the fish. You know, she normal she addressed the problem of small fish and the native fish as a source of nutrition. And in her work, uh, uh, in her work, she uh, um, uh, she, she really uh, tried to address the problems of hunger and malnourishment, as it is said that success has many fathers. So similarly goes with uh, uh, Professor Shikuntala also. She was born to Indian parents, Mr. Ram and Ramdai Hart Singh. And uh, she, uh, she was born and brought up uh, to in Caribbean island of Trinidad, where she did her BSc from Agriculture University in West Indies got her PhD degree from Agriculture University, uh, Veterinary and Agriculture University, Denmark. And, you know, she got married to a Danish citizen the, uh, known as Mr. Finn, who was the ambassador of Denmark to Bangladesh, Kenya and Nepal. Dr. Shikuntala Thisted had worked all across the globe in Tanzania, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Denmark and USA. So we can aptly call her as a global nutrition scientist for her development, for, for developing a holistic and nutritionally sensitive approach to the aquatic food chains. <coughs> her work was basically on the optimal fetal and child nutrition. So she, she worked on the nutrition. If we, if we try to divide the nutrition, nutrition has two aspects. It is the nutrition specific intervention and nutrition sensitive inter intervention. When we talk about nutrition specific intervention, it is normally delivered by health sectors and that is the doctors and health workers and the nurses. But whereas the nutrition sensitive intervention is taken care by the education, agriculture, livestock, fishery, water and sanitation, women empowerment, etc. So uh, by addressing uh, this, um, uh, this uh, lady, uh, Shukuntala, she was trying to address hunger and malnourishment and taking, and taking the aspect of nutrition sensitive intervention. So any, uh, any nutrition uh, or a health system in case of the has three tires, First is the general development. What is the general development of a particular community? If the general, for example, what's its social, economic, and political context, uh, in political context, but then the intervention is required when there is income poverty is there, employment, self-employment, dwindling assets, pension, transfers, and if these are any any adequate, then it leads to household uh, household food insecurity inadequate care, unhealthy house for, uh, household environment, and lack of the health services, which leads into a disease and it leads to the dietary intake problem, thus leading to the higher most tire that is the malnourished, where at this stage, there is a, there is a requirement of the nutritional sensitive intervention, but Dr. Th uh, Dr. Shukuntala, she worked on the nutrition sensitive intervention. She tried to take she tried to take the aspects of aquatic food system, fisheries, aquaculture, and women empowerment to you know address this problem. And uh, it is also seen in Lancet in a paper where it has said that for addressing an optimum nutrition, there is an equal responsibility of the nutrition sensitive program approaches. Approaches. So whether it could be agriculture, food security. So uh, social safety nets, 
early child development, maternal mental health, women empowerment, child protection, classroom education, water sanitation, and health and family planning. So in, when we try to address the problem of nutrition, there is an equal, uh, equal responsibility of the nutrition sensitive aspects to be taken into consideration rather than not lead it to a nutrition specific problem if it is addressed at the lower level only. So this, you know, model was being given by of uh, pond polyculture was given by Dr. Uh, Vijay and what Shukuntala did, she went it for the sustainable pond polyculture. Now, if you see, this is a video showing how this, you know, this, uh, these seeds are you know, uh, released into the water body of the Gobind Sagar. So this is a uh, this is a provided by the uh, you know fishery officer is there who is going to take control of the seeds and normally the seeds of katla common carp mrickle roku silver carp grass carp they are added even though our indigenous species if you see only katla mrickle and rohu are our indigenous but for having good production the exotic carps like silver carp big carp and grass carp are also introduced into this water body. So this, what uh, Shikuntala had an idea to introduce small fish, you know, the small fish inside the vacant niches of the pond. So she started working on Mola and she said, and when these small fishes are introduced into the water pond, they were in fact increasing five times the production of the bigger fish also. So the concept which the farmers were having of cleaning their, you know, ponds with pesticides and, you know, eradicating these small fishes, she, she addressed those small fishes and said that, you know, this small fish can also provide some source of nutrition to the general public. So this uh, 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 this concept of uh, you know adding the small fish was was a basic idea behind the Dr. Shukuntala's work. And if you see, if you see, you know this um, this silver carp. I I was uh, when I was a PhD student, and a lot of you know um, deliberations were taking place in my professor's room, uh, uh, late Professor M S Jawal, and many farmers and fishery workers, and I, uh, this even the director of fishery Himachal used to come. And while they were talking, they said by introducing this silver carp, you know it is playing havoc in Gobind Sagar. This silver carp um, is a uh, growing uh, going to such a huge uh, huge size but you know if i see the concept of uh, you know the aspects of um, farmers and the contractor they were very happy and they asked they wanted to introduce this uh, silver carp so there was a conflict between the administration and the farmers for adding this, you know, fish silver carp. If we see the Gobin Sagar structure, they, and they, this was my question to my guide also, but if fisherman is interested, why, you know, we can't, you we, we are not allowing the silver carp uh, to enter with, you know, moreover, if we see the polyculture, it is a, one of the very good fish, which is growing and giving good production. But then the point comes of sustainability. The you know the as you know my guide addressed this question. He told that initially in 1960s, if you see, there were only labio rohita and torpitora in Gobind Sagar, and slowly you know this was replaced by katla rohu and brigal in 1960s. This this was the basic scenario, and all were the indigenous species. But when in 1970s they started adding the exotic carps like grass carp silver carp and into the into the water ponds and they said that uh, by chance from a diholi fa fish farm in uh, gobind uh, uh, you know in uh, the raiding places this fish accidentally entered into gobind sagar dam but once it entered into the Gobind Sagar Dam, it was such a voracious feeder as moreover, it was, you know, destroying all the niches of our indigenous species. So that was a big concern. So even though when we think about production, its sustainability has to be taken into consideration. And I think so, Dr. Shikuntala did a very good job in providing that sustainable aspect and in providing, filling up those small niches 
which could be easily address the problem of nutrition. So uh, Dr. Shukuntala, she worked on MOLA, Empyrophyodon uh, MOLA, and this is a small fish species which is eaten as a whole with head, viscera, bones, and thus catering to the need of need of uh, calcium, calcium, vitamin A, iron, and zinc. Dr. Thirsted research demonstrated that high levels of multiple essential micronutrients and fatty acids in these affordable and local available foods offered life-changing benefits for children cognitive development in their first thousand days of life and the and the nutrition and health of their mother so she tried to address the first you know thousand the first thousand um, um, thousand days of the child's development where she said where where she tried to you know address this issue and she uh, this is basically uh, she not only addressed the nutri uh, the 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 concept of polyculture but she also helped the localites to develop a homemade gill net and this homemade gill net was basically designed for for women for women to empower the women to collect this small harvested mola in small amounts for their daily household use. So we also, if we see our Indian scenario, there are 450 species of small cultivable indigenous small species of uh, carps are there. And uh, these, these indigenous species are are uh, are dwindling down they, you know the, their their population is uh, dwindling because of the introduction of so many exotic carbs so the solution to the nutritional need is basically by taking care of our indigenous small fishes also so some of them include the osteobrama esmos puntia sarana noto notopotaras notopotaras puntia sticto Puntius chola, punti, labio bata, and Cirnus reba, chanda, chanda nama, labio, and anapas. These are very popular small fishes in uh, mm, uh, in North India. But while you know we were working on uh, our water bodies also in Sukna also, Dhanas Lake also, we were not able to see much of these fishes. So most of the water body ecosystem has been taken up by the major carps. So loss of this small indigenous indigenous fish species is a main concern. And if we see there, there are And uh, if we see, there are 62 small small fish species, and which are important from the food point of view. And 42 are the ornamental fishes. There, and because of the pollution, pesticide use in the paddy fields, shrinkage of suitable habitats, over exploitation, and other anthropogenic factors that led to the dwindling of the small indigenous fishes. So there is a need, there is a need to have a proper planning, management and strategy to even, you know, to address these small uh, fishes in our water ecosystem. So then the question comes, will scaling up the aquaculture cause problems of uh, sustainability? Will, you know, if we increase the aquaculture production, it is going to it is going to harm us the, the the answer is no but the scaling up inland aquaculture won't cause problem if it's done intelligently in fact the method is quite apt considering the water security we face today for example we require about one cubic meter of water to produce three kg of rice whereas in the same water we can produce Three, six kg, six kg of freshwater fish. So if, and that too, which has got more nutritional value and this fish can be cul cultivated 
which requires even the fish cultivated requires less fertilizers even though it requires urea and potash but in long, in small traces as compared to the the pesticides or the uh, fertilizers required for uh, for uh, growing rice so the, the the one more problem which you know the north indian uh, fish farmers are uh, north india is facing is that the process of appropriate small ponds so when it was designed by dr vijay it was designed for small ponds to develop this uh, inland fishery culture for small ponds say about half an acre hectare but the farmers of punjab haryana and andhra pradesh have extended their ponds and these sometimes sprawl over 300 hectares and not just that they have convert, converted these ponds into salt water ponds this can destroy large parts of already saline agricultural land so they have even started you know shrimp culturing by adding salt to the pond this is uh, this type of practices should be discouraged and if we consider the the sustainable development goals the by developing the uh, uh, the aquatic food system we can cater to approximately 10 goals of the sustainable development out of 17 by developing proper for food proper fish culturing we can we can uh, address the problem of poverty hunger we can have good health and well-being it also leads to gender equality there is a it is a decent work and with an economic growth even the industries and innovation innovation infrastructures are required because during the COVID time as it was seen so many apps were made to you know cater to the problems of the fishermen there's a there should be a responsible consumption and production so that's very important India may is standing for second in its production, but if we try to try to see its um, consumption part, it is not pan India. It is restricted to five few states where the where maximum uh, euro consumption is there. It also caters to the life below water that is and uh, and life below water maximum. If we need to take care of that climate change. And even though what all is on the land is affecting the fish production that is under water. So, uh, so in uh, uh, if we see, if we try to dig out the history of this, we can see that the two gems of the fish research which were produced, they uh, they were produced by CGI, I, uh, CGIAR Institute, that is Consultative Group of International Agriculture Research. Now these, both the scientists had been working under the world fish, that is the uh, under the world fish, and they had worked on different projects, like Shukuntala Thisted, she worked on the project fish, and on um, which started in 2017 and by 2021 it was completed by completion of his project she even received this food uh, world food prize so any institute is you know if it is this institute gets such uh, such a nice response it has a particular vision and mission so if you see the vision of the world fish it is an inclusive world of healthy well-nourished people and sustainable blue planet now and in future where they work with this mission to end hunger and ed and, and and advance sustainable development by 2030 through science and innovation to transform food land and water systems with an aquatic foods for healthier people and planet so the the world this this project where Dr. Shikuntala worked, she she worked on the focal countries on which she worked were Bangladesh, were, were Bangladesh, Cambodia, and Myanmar. Whereas uh, in Africa, she worked on Kenya, Zimbabwe, and Nigeria. So these these you, uh, her work is still you know scaling among the surrounding surrounding countries also like 
uh, like India, Malaysia, there is Mal even Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, all of them are getting, you know, benefit from the work of Dr. Shukundla. We as an Indians also feel pride in having so many premier re fishery research institutes in India. We have the Central Marine Fishery Research in Cochin, and this is basically catering to the marine fisheries. We have the Central Inland Fisheries research, uh, research, which is basically in West Bengal, which is catering to the inland fisheries. We have the Insti uh, Central Institute of Fisheries Technology in again in Cochin, and we have Central Institute of Fishery Education in Mumbai, Central Institute of Fishery Nautical and Engineering Training in Cochin, uh, National Bureau of Fish Genetic Research in Lucknow, and Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture in Bhuvneshwar. So Bhuvneshwar really did a lot of work during the COVID time, and they developed uh, did they, they developed a uh, uh, Matya uh, Setu app uh, app in uh, you know Android phones, uh, which was used for learning and uh, different aspects of fish farming and whatever the farmers were facing problems. So this app was helping them to cater to their problems. So there is a central Bharak, uh, uh, brackish water aquacultures in uh, Chennai, cold water fishery research institute in Bhimtal, and natural, uh, National Fisheries Development Board in Hyderabad, National Institutes of Fishery Post Harvest Development. So India is, you know, 20 to 25 percent of our fish are, you know, getting. Uh, uh, we are not able to cater them because it's post harvest technology. We don't have a post harvest technology. So this is an area where India need really needs to work. And there's a coastal engineering also for fisheries in Bengal. We all are very aware that India's fish, India fisheries in India is a sun rising sector and we are placed we are placed second in the fisheries production third in the aquaculture and we have been working constantly to increase our production there the government's policies are good enough for the fisheries one pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana also which was launched in may 2020 now this scheme also will, uh, will ensure to estimate an investment of rupees 20000 crores to uh, to uh, up to an year of 2025 and aims to increase fish production in the country by 2020 million metric tons by 2024-25. It also poses to double the export earnings from the present rupees 40,000 crore to about 100 crores by 2024-25. Presently, the fishery sector suffers from the post harvest loss of 20 to 25%. So this Yojana also aims to reduce it to less than 10%. So expected to generate, this is going to expect it, they are expecting to generate 1.5 million additional employment opportunities in the country's fishery sector. So increasing fish production in the, in the country to 12 kg per capita is their aim. As you know, it is said by the World Health Organization, which recommends that consuming 12 kg fish in a year is the basic requirement. In India, if we see approximately 5 to 9 kg per annum against the global per capita income, that which is 16 kg. So we still need to work, lot, work a lot on the consumption aspect, despite, you know, we have good production, but we are quite low in the, in the consumption aspect. So this, the, the, as we try to assess our respects and the work which has been done throughout globe and India, we, there is a special reference which should be mentioned about the Hill report, which which was you know Professor A. V. Hill. He was called to um, by called by government of India uh, to analyze to assess the organization of scientific and industrial research in India post-war reconstruction plan and according to him he said that india needs to talk about the quadrilateral dilemma of population health food and natural resources 
to him the fundamental problems of india were not really physical chemical or technological but a complex of biological one centrally or you know they're centrally around its population health and nutrition but if we see he also emphasized that we should work on the fisheries in india and if we try to understand what av hill was directing i think so india has fairly done well in its fishery sectors and is still continues continue uh, continuously doing it uh, doing it but the aspect of sustainable development is a very important aspect in today's scenario and uh, moreover we if we see but the, um, if we see the global hunger index today when india is slipping down its position in global hunger index and showing no significant significant improvements in it, in its health in relation to the nutritional status aquaculture and fishery seems to be a very good option and but we need to have good better schemes missions which is basically the need of the r and india should focus on the research pertaining to fish nutrition and related field we should acknowledge the work of dr shukuntala to bring it into practice which i don't think so it is very uh, um, when we visit our you know uh, roper wetland gobin sagar we are not able to see as much indigenous species as we are we should be expected and the major problem is that it is there, there is no harm in you know growing this exotic species also but the major concern is if there is any outbreaks then we are left with a very vacant ecosystem that ecosystem will not be if the topmost trophic level is removed it is going to the our full ecosystem water body ecosystem is going to dwindle so that's the main concern regarding the exotic species which are introduced and why we should try to take an example take an inspiration from dr shukuntala and try to include those small spe uh, species into into our water bodies this is an again an idea where we should work on, uh, work on and try to even release the small fry, the fries of these small fishes into the water body so that small you know from my side whatever i could understand with the her with her experiments and with her work and uh, there's a there is a you know uh, what dr vijay and dr shukun i uh, dr shukuntla had done they are the only two fishery scientists out of the 52 uh, scientists uh, who got the world food prize and uh, and both of them are the you know fishery one and both of them are of the indian descent so that's that's really make us feel proud that we have some cultural uh, culturally or you can say from our uh, instincts that we have been seeing and we have number of solutions to address the the address the water resources and to make it uh, better for the future so thank you so much thank you fantastic exposition wonderful talk yeah. yeah and you brought out all the issues this was excellent i hope all yes. your colleagues listen to it <laughs> sir not many <laughs> they couldn't join today Nani, of... I, we'll have it posted to all of them at the PRG. Yeah, post... actually all our talks are available the link from the website but otherwise we can also share the link with you we usually yes. send a mail to the speaker yeah. and we shall do it this time thank you very much yeah those, the full who, th those who have not heard we will pass on the message <laughs> okay okay sir okay thank you so much wonderful talk yeah wonderful uh, so so uh, uh, mr dharamveer would like to present some remarks no i'd like to ask her uh, one okay of the a question why is it uh, uh, fish has not become a staple diet of the non-vegetarian that they talk. Uh, so this is a big, you know, consumption aspect is definitely. And if we see in North India, we are producing so much. The contractor is so smart enough when we go there, he for our research worker work also, he refuses to give us fish with full permissions and all. 
but uh, they all export immediately that fish is taken away and exported so we are not catering to our public you know if we see our missions what is our mission our mission is production our mission is not our uh, society so we no, unless no, and until no no, no no while i agree with you production if there is so much of demand internationally as well as within the country what is coming in the way of production as you as you would have seen food production increased many times because yes. it was <clears throat> the need of, for to feed so much of the, such a vast population on this similar uh, level uh, both uh, white revolution that has taken place has contributed to the nutritional levels of indians our own people but if the fish demand is so high what is coming in the way of raising the production so production is basically if we see the scenario it is increasing if you see uh, 50s may 0.7 million metric tons say it has increased to 10 for 10.4 met, uh, million metric tons it is increasing and at a good phase with a sustainable you know at, it should you know grow slowly only but maybe sir i would say are eating in north india we don't uh, you know we we mostly we worship you know fish we uh, we don't most are vegetarians and that could be one of the reason why it, it is not you know very popular but agar yeah. aap Austri australia yeah. vagara mein chale jao they consider it as a vegetarian fish is considered as vegetarian no no ne wo baat to aapki theek hai main i am looking at the national perspective not Haan. specific to haryana or punjab uh, uh, area you see the production and consumption within the state of haryana states of haryana punjab may not be substantial very small very few people eat uh, in terms of percentages yes, as sir. Yes, sir. whereas as you go towards the east or the west or uh, the south Haan. you will see the number of people eating fish goes up so what i am asking you is has there been any problem in the north india marketing or selling the so called fish tradition uh, Tradi sir marketing aspect you know i have not taken studied much why but it is there that if you see the post harvest technology also means immediately once the fish is jaise sir for example silver carp it it really goes very huge magar within one within 24 hours if it is not preserved properly it is all perished so you that is the, the one of the main issue is that we should install some uh, 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 this refrigerators very near to the water bodies so that the, is second issue that i like to ask you you would have studied the large water bodies in the north take for instance bhagra dam it has a huge lake uh, and there are many such lakes elsewhere yes, in, yes. The, in the north or elsewhere in the country so has any attempt been made to produce larger quantity of fish in these water tank water bodies uh, i had we had gone some uh, sorry, a few months ago to uh, the the konsa dam hai panchkula ke ye jo punjab mein punjab mein jo hai himachal himachal and punjab ka jo border hai uh we i visited uh, there's a huge dam and uh, i asked some people uh, what, what is happening about the fish here he says log le jate hain kha le le jate hain but there has been no systematic development of fish culture uh, in our in the water bodies large water bodies including bhagra dam for instance uh, and you don't have to spend money to produce so much of fish so i'm just wondering that is one question uh, has punjab university done any work uh, for raising the production of fish uh, sir basically uh, if i see my professor and you know dr tandon was there dr johal was there they had been working on more on the environmental aspect so they were more concerned about not cons about the sustainable development because if we have rivers and reservoirs in punjab sir hum koshish karte hain ki reservoirs ko nahi chhede jata 
we try not to put much of the seed into it because once you know that is a main issue i also ask this my you know, think to my professor ki sir jab fishermen khush hai contractor khush hai then why you people are so concerned to add these small fishes or indigenous fishes so she he told me ki agar there is if there is any disease outbreak the total you know ecological system will dwindle so that's a main concern sir when we talk about any rivers and in uh, any you know reservoirs we don't try to uh, put in such a load of uh, fishes which you know cannot be sustained so this is very important agar aap over even agar aapne dekha hoga ki dr vijay when he he worked you know in india uh, in punjab side they have started making such a big dams that's not a good practice we need to have a small dams only and in small a uh, small ponds only and in this small ponds only we should culture becoming very big ponds again it is not very advisable for inland so uh, maybe you know being an environmentalist i'm more biased towards the um, you know our indigenous species and not concerned much about uh, production but uh, there are so many people who are working on production <laughs> नहीं ठीक है थैंक थैंक यू फॉर द क्लेरिफिकेशन मैं अप्रिशिएट या डॉक्टर विपिन श्रीवास्तव प्लीज अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ एंड आस्क द क्वेश्चन विपिन राइट इट वाज अ वेरी कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव लेक्चर कंग्रेचुलेशंस फॉर दैट आई हैव टू सीरियस एंड वन वेरी सिली क्वेश्चन वन इज व्हेन यू कैलकुलेट द पर कैपिटा रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ फिश do you take into account the fact that a large fraction of population doesn't eat fish in india uh, yes sir yes sir this this is in fact very true and uh, very uh, rightly said maybe because that is the reason we uh, if we are not we are not consuming the consumption part is low in india agar aap stats pe dekhoge so there's it's quite low in india that the consumption aspect but uh, mm, uh, we are non vegetarian that's our you know uh, i i would do not say that we all should include that but whosoever uh, it is uh, what thistet said she you know she tried to uh, make us understand that first 1000 days are very important for the development of the uh, child and that should be cater and some micronutrients usne sir chutneys and powders bana diye so uh, when we you know use any animal products on our face or when we try to eat animal products it is fine we don't know ki wo medicine mein kya hai magar jab hamare ko koi aise fish pakrata hai to we you, uh, you know we try to say ki nahi humne we show that resentment but she what she did is she tried to make a powder and chutney and ask them to add it in your you know a putter jaise masale daate hai you add this one spoon in your food and have it so i think so that's a good option for indians also <laughs> no that that's fine i was my question was about the figures that you quoted per capita requirement haan ji sir so the everybody doesn't require it because you know they they don't eat it so are the figures uh, how okay the figures about who sir who figure of uh, 12 and 16 so yeah. uh, who really you know recommends it should be taken because yeah. most uh, some of the micronutrients uh, we require it regularly means every day we need that it cannot be then we take a substitute like for example if you go if you see you visit a pediatrician uh, he, he or she will try to give a small kid with zinc but you know we are not willing to take the fish but uh, substitutes of zinc zinc we are taking so whenever and uh, uh, i think so the main aim behind her was that we should add it in a food system okay, okay. so that is the main idea behind it okay the second question is that i think in connection with the food grain production i i feel and i i i should be corrected if somebody knows about it that there is a big disconnect between the agricultural universities and institutions and the the farmers the at at the at the ground level at the ground level yes. right so you know there there's no uh, proper advice yeah, given to the to the farmers as to what to grow and what not to grow and there is so much surplus of uh, this particular food grain and so on is there similar could there be similar disconnect in connection with the 
with the fisheries between the institutions, the institutes, and and the farmers who are harvesting the fish. Sir, very rightly said, and I totally agree with you. And uh, you know, when Dr. Arun Grover also approached me, I asked him the same question. Yes, sir, do you think I am the right person to speak upon, upon the World Food Prize and that to, uh, you know, we are hardcore fishery research, working on fish and this, but uh, I, I think so he was, uh, he, he really, and he is the second person I would say after my professor who encouraged me to study about different aspect of fishes. So this was, uh, you know, I am thankful to him. I never thought, thought about this per capita, how, you know, why it is required. Even though we were addressing the same, we were working on the interface of why the waste which is developed, the environmental aspect, but sir, that correlation and um, I would like to hear also mention that out of so many research institute, I have only visited two. And um, this is again that that uh, I can see that lacuna between our fishery in that university level at IAR institutes level and at production level. So there is that cohesion is less. You very okay. rightly said. Right, right, right. So the the silly Actually, question is that when you make these ponds for harvesting fishes, don't they become <laughs> breeding ground for for mosquitoes and things? Uh, sir, How do you these, tackle that problem? Huh. Sir, these, in fact, that there, there is no problem. Uh, uh, wherever fish is, it is not going to have mosquito larva, which is even taken oh. care by the grass carp, by even the cypress carp. It will take oh, care. I so see. it's a good option. It's a very okay. good option to okay. have a small pond and it is not going to be a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ravneet. Um, Dharambir has some more comments. Uh, uh, there, is one cent, there is one central fishery research sir, institute can't. in Rawhsar. Oh, sorry, cancer. Please carry on. No, you No, no, no. No, after that. After that, we'll take cancer. There is one central fishery research institute in Rawhsar in Haryana. Uh, and uh, I tell you, I having worked for nearly 42 years in Haryana government, I never heard about this institute unless until in I started. In spite of me. Yes, yes fortunately, <laughs> she did not know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I never heard about it, though I had uh, known ICR institutes otherwise quite well. <clears throat> so I'm wondering what is its contribution to the state or to this region? Sir, uh, I would like to make a you know reference here that uh, Haryana has left behind Punjab. You know, Haryana has canal fisheries. It, they don't have any river. We have water bodies, we have everything, but still Punjab is, you know, working less. And- No, we have that Punjab way back in many, in many areas. Yes, but I mean, Haryana- Punjab is now not as developed as Haryana. Yeah, but way? Haryana, so in 1970s, I when you know, uh, as you know, it was also we could see this while we were in uh, students that it, they developed the canal fisheries. They developed their canals and they developed you. Uh, uh, if you see and visit any Haryana pond, they have a very good um, uh, post harvesting uh, st uh, stations there. And you know, they're catering to the fish immediately, which is produced in the canal, they are taking care of that. We, um, this is again being a little bit from Punjab side, we are not able to take care of that. So, okay. and uh, it's a credit for Haryana and that's a vision. So any institute, you know, if, if I also see it go through this, uh, bio, when we have gone through this biographies, uh, institutes really have uh, any institute which has a vision, any state which has a mission and in, uh, some yojanas are there. So definitely there is an improvement. So I, Haryana is really very good in canal fisheries. No, I, I just want to know the contribution of the Central Institute of Fisheries Education uh, located at Rohtak. Rohtak, yes, sir. The, so sir, what specific... do you know? Ka hai, Nein, or lobsters, sir. lobsters ke liye hai. So, so, uh, sir, um, specifically, I don't know, but then again, uh, uh, I'm telling you because Haryana is working on canal fisheries. So that okay. is why they, they are, you know, taking care of the salt water also. 
but this is a not a very good practice for punjab because already our land is getting saline so we tr should try to develop only those which can be sustained by our that particular ecosystem okay thank you thank you very much thank you professor vipin and okay. now i request professor kanth to give his comments or questions thanks a lot uh, professor kanth for giving me this opportunity it's an excellent talk by ravneet gorji on the fish and uh, the quality of fish as a food nutritional value and in fact i would like to talk on two aspect one is about the introduction given by dr basin on professor alwali in addition to uh, his uh, academic excellence uh, i had the privilege player of meeting him in a couple of lectures and functions at the punjab university uh, he has a high spiritual uh, i would say achievements also it is by virtue of that that he became pro vice chancellor at Badu University. The other issue I want to talk to, rather one point. Uh, she, uh, Dr. Ravneet, uh, mentioned uh, at the end virtually that the fish is even worshipped in some of the places. In fact, uh, uh, a quality of fish, which is that it cannot remain without water. This has been referred to. इन आध्यात्मिक जगत में मैं कहूंगा धार्मिक वैल्यू इसको कहा जाता है कि फिश जो है पानी के बगैर जी नहीं सकती है इसी तरह इंसान को भी इतना प्यार करना चाहिए ईश्वर से कि वो ईश्वर के बगैर जी ना सके इसको बयान किया गया आप जानते हैं कई लोग जो फिश खाते हैं उनको खाने के बाद सोने समय प्यास बहुत लगती है इस इस विषय को लेके एक बयान किया गया है फिश को बेशक काट दिया जाए तेल में उसको भून दिया जाए नमक मिर्च लगाया जाए बड़े स्वाद से काट काट कर खाया जाए फिर भी जब खा लिया उसके बाद भी अंत में ये पानी मांगती है तो इसलिए कहा जाता है इस इसको बयान किया गया है एक एम में गुरु ग्रंथ साहब के आलू वालिया जी उसके बारे जानते होंगे वो मेरे को भूल गई तो पारे गुरु ग्रंथ साहब में इसको बयान किया गया है इसी तरह से कि उसको काट पीट दिया जाता है फिर भी फिश जो है पानी मांगती रहती है इसको पानी के बगैर सरता नहीं है इसी तरह से वेन आई से लव ऑफ गॉड आई नॉर्मली मीन यू लव द क्वालिटी ऑफ गॉड इन अदर वर्ड द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ ह्यूमन वैल्यूज विच आर as is rather personified by god that's what is means the love for god love for that human values thank you very much thanks a lot dr ravni kaur that is little adhyatmik view which i wanted to present thank you very much thank you professor kent um we anuj anuj goel wanted to ask a question anuj up uh, yes 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 ma'am thank you actually anuj ka aur mera ek bahut purana favorite project hai which hasn't worked out we wanted to study the especially the ponds and other water bodies in punjab and haryana for microplastics and we wanted to do it in public mode so anuj please ask your question uh thank you ma'am thank you for giving me the opportunity uh Uh, as there is a serious concern ma'am uh, of plastic flow in sea water uh, so to what extent is, uh, uh, this is uh, serious to human health considering yes, it sir. as a primary primary uh, source of food uh, sir microplastics you know up recently there was a paper which you know identified microplastics in blood of the human also so this was this is a serious concern this is again you know when we we as an environmentalist we talk we normally don't talk about production when we talk about environment we are more concerned to preserve it 
so we if we want you know better food definitely we need to keep it preserve it do it properly so this issue of microplastic is very true and i don't think so there is a solution for that but agar uh, sir mai isi ke microplastics mein i have not worked but i have worked on the heavy metals and if i see this you, the, these microplastic or heavy metals they are not much in quantity agar aap dekhoge water body mein zyada hai but in muscles it is very less so even though it was present in their gills in their viscera but in muscles the accumulation of heavy metal or i would i cannot say specifically about microplastics but i think so it is less so it is not very harmful it is safe to have fish even though the water quality is not good but still the fish is better thank you, thank you. so we shall continue to eat fish thank <laughs> you very much and dr rajinder singh Please yes. Uh, first of all, thanks for the nice lecture. I think my <coughs> question is more for Professor Aluwalia, uh, or maybe Professor Grover. He can give the answer. Uh, Professor Aluwalia said that in the beginning, the number of our food laureate it was quite high, but in the last part, in the last years. hello there are very less indian who are getting this honor so my question is what is the what are the causes for that in the beginning very high number and now it is decreasing this the quality of research right competitive quality of research which is reflective of that mm -hmm. competitive you know the government was very gango about supporting agricultural research when we had food shortage mm -hmm. when the economy was going badly so you realize the first few uh, food laureates are the ones who got nurtured in 60s 70s and 80s okay then the funding for the research we opened many agricultural universities but we did not provide them enough funding every agricultural university did not receive that kind of a funding so agricultural universities prime of it is large number of them are in the state sector mm -hmm. so it is the state governments for their own economy should have preferentially funded the research in their respective agricultural universities which they did not do they did not do funding for research and so agricultural universities it ought to have received a larger fraction of the research funds because that is intimately related to the economy because it's an agricultural economy why did the british support agricultural research because they felt if the agricultural incomes will not increase the british goods will not sell in india it was a trading company which had interest in promoting agriculture in india because they wanted to get their products sold to the these people who having a larger agricultural income so india indian government so the state governments of india do not have the mindset of east india companies they have to have the mindset of east india companies mm -hmm. if the state governments wants to have more income at their disposal it is necessary that people who are connected with the agricultural economy they must produce more and they will produce more only if the science and technology efforts is enhanced and this simple fundamental principle has not been understood by the state politicians as well as the state bureaucrats i am very sorry to say dharmveer ji can answer <laughs> well i have not heard your full question Grover sir, uh, if, if, if I were to answer, there has not been any decline in supporting the so far as Haryana is concerned. Mm -hmm. We have hardly touched the budget of HAU or other institutions. We have also set up Haryana Animal Husbandry University as well, and few others. <coughs> i don't think the financial constraint is there and hu's contribution has been very substantial in taking agriculture to much higher le levels than before same is the case of the animal husbandry university the issue 
for Haryana, so far as the animal husbandry is concerned, that large number of animals are being get, are getting exported to other states. And the tragedy is most of these milk animals are killed for beef for meat purposes after they stop giving milk because maintaining them for a few more months is very unproductive. So that is one issue. So far as fish is concerned, fish production had increased, but because of the increasing pollution in the ponds, large ponds, it is getting affected. And uh, fish, fish, is, uh, fish is also becoming a carrier of several uh, uh, bacteria, uh, harmful bacteria and diseases. That cannot be ruled out at all. And in fact, you would be surprised that the, the largest uh, uh, farming community, Jats, have a large number of them have become non vegetarian. I mean, uh, the Banyas have become non vegetarian. So are Pandits. So the, the, the question of meat eaters, meat eating people has not decreased. In fact, it has increased. So our challenge today, countrywide, is how to produce good quality uh, non-vegetarian products and how to ensure its marketing, storage and transportation. These are the challenges. I hope I have aptly answered your questions uh, or addressed your concerns. The question was about food price, but anyway, uh, food price. So, there was, uh, so uh, as regard food price, decline in number. But anyway, that I think Grover, Professor Grover, is more uh, qualified to answer. So, if there is, my apologies, there are they Facebook may quick question. No, ma'am, there is no any question on Facebook. Uh, Please announce the next lecture. Okay. मैं ग्रोवर साहब आपको एक और कमेंट कर देता हूं कि बहुत सारी यूनिवर्सिटीज में डिक्लाइन जो है नॉट ओनली इन हरियाणा बट एवरीवेयर इन द कंट्री इज के इन ब्रीडिंग बहुत हो रही है इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गेट पीपल फ्रॉम आउटसाइड बिकॉज़ ऑफ द लोकल प्रेशर्स तो बहुत ऐसे इश्यूज हैं एकेडमिक्स में के किस तरह से अपॉइंटमेंट किया जाए इसी वजह से सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटीज आर ट्राइंग टू परफॉर्म बेटर देन द स्टेट यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑन इन अ जनरल ऑन अ जनरल बेसिस आई एम नॉट सेइंग स्पेसिफिक वंस आर बीइंग हियर इट्स अ वेरी लार्ज क्वेश्चन थैंक यू सो इन द एंड we thank everybody for joining us. We also, would you like to say something more about about vote of thanks? Well, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I would like to thank the speaker yes, for a wonderful lecture. Uh, very comprehensive, very knowledgeable lecture. I had not heard such a lecture before on such, on this, on fisheries. In fact, um, all that I knew fisheries is through care. And my children. Not fishery, <laughs> but about fish. About <laughs> fish or fishes. So uh, my uh, Bengali heart was delighted today to see all the species which are edible. Thank you. <laughs> so to that, I, I'm really happy that uh, thank you very much, uh, Ravneet ji, for <laughs> such a good lecture. You and I think we you need did to a carry on. You have done a very good job. And thank you, Grover. Sir, for introducing her to us. एक बात कही जाती है कि जो बंगाली फिश खाते हैं, उनके दिमाग बहुत अच्छे होते हैं। कहाँ तक ये ठीक है? पर दिमाग का नहीं पता, पर जवान का और पेट का पता है। पर एक बात कैसे? सबसे पढ़े लिखे लोग थे एक समय में कलकत्ते में और कहाँ बंगाल है और कहाँ पंजाब है? आपके सामने है कि ज़्यादा पढ़े ये भी एक सोचने वाली बात है हम कहां थे हरियाणा में खाने को कुछ मिलता नहीं था पानी नहीं था सूखा था 
आज कहा बंगाल है और कहा हरियाणा है ये ये बहुत एक गंभीर समस्या है एक मैं क्योंकि खड़गपुर में पढ़ा तो एकला चलो रे का फिलोसफी है उधर जिससे भी बात करो एकला चलो रे अफसोस वो वो तो पूरे हिंदुस्तान का प्रॉब्लम है वी डोंट नो हाउ टू वर्क सो ओके सो वी क्लोज दिस टुडे थैंक यू वेरी मच टू एवरीबॉडी एंड आल्सो टू अनुज एंड महिपाल थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू ग्लोवर साहब फॉर यू थैंक यू निशिमा थैंक यू सर थैंक यू प्रोफेसर बसी थैंक यू ग्लोवर सर फॉर गिविंग दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू विपिन आप वापस कब आए